What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here. I hope you don't mind seeing my face a bunch because I have a bunch of videos to make to catch up on stuff that happened because while I happened to be at PAX last weekend, GaryCon was also the same weekend along with like three other conventions and a ton of news dropped at GaryCon in the wake of D&D stuff. I tried to stay up on top of it, but con, con recovery, here we are now making the videos. So there was a panel uh, 50th anniversary panel at Gary Con, where Chris Perkins provided a bunch of information. There was also a tweet thread from the Wizards of the Coast account. Normally, I would have done one myself had I been there, but either way, let's go ahead and dive into it. If you like this kind of stuff, news coverage and whatnot from the D&D space, there's also going to be a bunch of coverage coming out for a bunch of the new adventures as well. Lego live stream, all this kind of stuff coming up in the coming weeks. So consider subscribing to the channel so you can stay up to date on what's going on. So let us go ahead and jump in here. So we have this article here on D&D Beyond. We'll start here and then we'll go to the tweet thread and see if there's anything different. So here's a breakdown of what you missed at the panel. 50th anniversary play events kick off. It says we're making it easier than ever to sit down and play with new and old friends, a series of play events held throughout our gold anniversary. This kickoff weekend at Gary Con and PAX East, fans have an option to jump into the tournament style and non-competitive play with Descent in the Lost Caverns of Sojanth. Top scoring tables at these conventions will have the opportunity to win fabulous prizes. Uh, it has been remastered from the original Gygaxian Adventure. You'll be able to claim a free copy. It's available now. We'll do that in a separate video on D&D Beyond. D&D Beyond users with a Master Tier subscription can jump into play and can use those maps uh, from the D&D maps integrated into the virtual tabletop. They're also working with Start Playing to allow those to be available. Now, I did try to get into this. Now, when you looked at the schedule originally at PAX East, it seemed like there was a ton of opportunities to play this. There was not. There were a bunch of D&D games happening. There were two opportunities to play Descent into the Lost Caverns of Sojanth. It was on Friday night at 8 p.m. was one that had like originally 80-something slots. Again, I can't speak for Gary Khan. I can only speak for PAX. Had about 80 slots or 85 slots, but then one of the DMs called out six, so the slots were less than that. And that was the competitive version. The non-competitive version was... Saturday at 3 p.m., and that one only had 50 slots. Uh, at 7.30 or so, about a half an hour before the 8 p.m. slot on Friday night, it was already full with a wait list. And about 10 minutes after 2 o'clock, which was 2 o'clock when the line opened on Saturday, it was full with its 50 slots. I also was hoping to play with friends that I had at the convention so we could have played together. Unfortunately, wrangling friends at a convention is kind of like wrangling cats. So uh, it wasn't really an opportunity to get a chance to play either one, unfortunately. I also would love to know what the fabulous prizes were uh, because I didn't even get to see what they were. So anyway, that's cool. We'll do full coverage on Descent into the Lost Caverns of Sojanth in a separate video because it is, again, available now on D&D &D Beyond. This is a shout out to our partners. The panel turned to the spotlight on our partners, including those whose fantastic works have been integrated into D&D &D Beyond. Darrington Press with the Taldori Reborn, Dungeon Dudes and Ghostfire Gaming with Dungeons of Drakenheim, and then Ghostfire Gaming for Grim Hollow, Humblewood for Hit Point Press, and then Tome of Beasts for Cobalt Press. Something else that's worth mentioning that uh, I don't know if it really deserves a standalone video, but the new Dungeon Dudes Kickstarter is available currently, and part of the reward system for that is D&D Beyond integration. So it seems like both not only what was released in the past, but also stuff going forward from the Dungeon Dudes will be available on D&D Beyond. So we might start seeing more of this kind of integration going forward. It says we've also been, uh, also been hard at work to bring more cool merch from these other groups. Beetle and Grimm have a platinum version of uh, Vecna Eva Ruin. Converse has D&D high top sneakers. I'll have to show you that because there's sneakers. There's also apparel as well. They actually did have some of these available for you to check out at the various conventions. Paxis and Gary Con. they were in a glass display case. We've already talked about Lego. That'll be coming, I think, actually Lego Insiders. It goes on sale on April 1st, so you'll be able to pick that up early. Uh, Rain Spooner did these kind of... Uh, they're, I guess they're Hawaiian. They're calling them, what are they calling them? Aloha shirts. 
Uh, so your traditional kind of Hawaiian looking shirt style. I'm not a huge fan of them, but they're all right. Serious Dice brought back a Sarak treasure packs, which include a random set of dice, metal coin, and a dice bag for the dice goblin in your life. We'll have to go pull those up. And then obviously WizKids has their pre-painted miniature sets, as we've talked about. Uh, you can see some of the merch on display. You could see it at GaryCon. You could also see some of that stuff, again, mostly the Converse-related stuff and the Rain Spooner shirts at PAX East. Vecna Eve of Ruin discussion. What happened when the Archlich Vecna seeks to destroy and subjugate the multiverse? You get to play in a high-level adventure and iconic allies stick it to him. Panel talked about the multiverse-spanning adventure Vecna Eve of Ruin and the process behind key art made. You can see the kind of transitions of the art here. We also got the first look at a beautiful piece of art from Vecna Eve of Ruin. The adventure will take players on a tour of the multiverse, including or hunting down the uh, Rod of Seven Parts. Kryn is among the realms your players will visit. Kryn is, again, the world of Dragonlance, which you can see here. And here we see Evernight in all its morbid glory in the Shadowfell, which is, again, uh, news that we're going to actually go to the Shadowfell, Shadowfell itself. Previously, we've only ever dealt with the Shadowfell in 5e officially, in the forms of domains of dread, not in a kind of general shadow fell aspect. So it says this is the dark uh, reflection of Neverwinter and is choked by ash and surrounded by lava. You'll find necromancers and undead plenty walking ever nights, dark streets, and all manner of dark trades being made. In fact, the Eve of Ruin brings 30 monsters to your table, among them the Death Wolf and the Hurtalod. Death Wolves are more commonly found on Kryn, which you can kind of see here. They combine the bone breaking might of werewolves and the horror of the undead. The Hurtalod, I'm assuming is how you pronounce it, are as kind as they are huggable. They arise from the corpses of the dead gods in the astral sea. If you chance upon one, be prepared to make a quick escape aboard your spell jamming vessel. And that looks to be this sort of almost plesiosaur like creature. You can learn more about the adventure in our What is Vecna Eve of Ruin article. Okay, and then here it is. What uh, an introduction to Vecna, Nest of the Eldritch Eye. This will be available, I think, next week. Uh, we also got to look at the cover art by Greg Staples for Vecna, Nest of the Eldritch Eye, a prequel adventure to Vecna, Eve of Ruin. In this one-shot adventure, your party of third-level characters patrol the streets of Neverwinter and investigate a murder that leads to a face-off with Vecna's cultists. Pre-order a copy of Vecna, Eve of Ruin uh, of the physical digital bundle before May 21st to get a copy of this. It'll be available, sorry, on April 16th, so that's the release date for that. Uh, it also be available for purchase for $4.99 by itself on May 21st. Quests from the Infinite Staircase Spotlight. Open a door and take a journey through the multiverse in Quest from the Infinite Staircase, a collection of six remastered adventures from D&D's first edition. The panel showed off cover art by Sid Mills, traditional cover, and the alt cover, which you can see there, as well as two adventures, The Lost Caverns of Sojanth and Expedition to the Barrier Peaks. Uh, Expedition to the Barrier Peaks is definitely a personal favorite of mine because it's very space and like sci-fi ish also there is the lost laboratory of koalish is very much like a a spiritual successor or maybe even a continuation of expedition to the barrier peaks but either way we have the lost city when a star falls beyond the crystal cave pharaoh the lost caverns of sojans which is the ninth level adventure and then the last one here is the expedition to the barrier peaks for levels 11 to 13 the adventure collection went up for pre-order on march 21st and releases on july 16th and in case you were wondering, yes, laser guns are back. Again, as mentioned, you can see this Mind Flayer here with sort of this high-tech space outfit. That, again, as I mentioned, lost without, I guess it's not really a spoiler if you know anything about it, but Expedition to the Barrier Peaks is very much a sci-fi adventure. So yes, in fact, laser guns are back. Sneak peek at the making of the original D&D &D 1970 to 1977. You can see a little bit of an excerpt of the article here is the introductory page that talks about what you can expect in the historical book, notably the publishers for the first time, or notably the book publishes for the first time the first draft of D&D. So there you go. I'm very excited about this book. I will be definitely picking this up. It's definitely like a cool coffee table book piece of history to have, as we are going to be able to see a variety of other things and also have some basic first edition stuff in full publication within this book. Since here are the table of contents revealing the curated collection of documents that D&D senior game designer Jason Tondro walks readers through to show how the game went from an idea to a beloved TTRPG. We then have the first page of Part 1 Precursors, which kicks off discussions on D&D's impact on media and importance of exploring the game's history. 
And finally, these pages show original artwork for iconic monsters such as the Mind Flayer and Roper, as you can see here. A tease from the 2024 Player's Handbook. This is a big year for Dungeons & Dragons. Not only is a fantastic lineup on the horizon, but we're releasing the 2024 Player's Handbook and DMG later in the year. These rulebooks are the re uh, revision of the 5th edition rule set and chock full of new gorgeous artwork, as you can see below. At the panel, we gave attendees a first look at artwork and a draft of the opening page for the revised wizard. You can see the artwork below, but as a reminder, it is not the final version. Remember that we did hear that each class and subclass will have a piece of art showcasing it. This looks to be, I think this is actually the Staff of Power, I believe. Uh, one of the legendary uh, wizard magic items, or I guess arcane caster magic items. It says, we're delighted to share in D&D's 50th anniversary with you. This year, you'll discover all new adventures, merch that celebrates the game's story and history, and core rulebooks that build upon and revise 5th edition rules you know and love. We'll have plenty more news to share in the upcoming months, so stay tuned on D&D Beyond. And then we can go ahead and see, here was the treasure packs, the Acerarac treasure packs, which I guess are just like random dice packs. A bunch of companies do this, so you don't necessarily have to go to serious dice. Uh, I would guess if you're looking for random these are a random dice set, and they also do come with a coin, so consider that. Uh, but also, you know, look around. There are other companies that do sort of random die packs. Uh, these look to be a random set, as in a full matching set of seven. Uh, one, two, three, yeah, seven. Whereas some of the other ones will do just completely rando sets. But again, look around, see which one makes the most sense for you, and then obviously price may be a factor. And then we also had, again, this thread here, which was on uh, Twitter here. Uh, I'm going to scroll through it. I think most of it was already covered in that. They do mention that they opened with a moment of silence for Jim Ward, who we unfortunately lost not that long ago, which I think just last week. We see, again, more of these creatures. I think this is basically everything we just talked about, but I'm going to look to see if there's anything unique. Not seeing too much. Uh, again... Now a sneak peek of the 2024 Player's Handbook. You download this free wallpaper here. Here's your first look at the revised wizard art. That was basically it. They didn't really give us much more than that. All right, well, that was it. So there you go, folks. That is sort of the update on the 50th anniversary of D&D &D from GaryCon. I'll put links in the description to any of those things if you want to check them out. We have a video coming out that is everything you need to know on Quest from the Infinite Staircase, as that was a video released not that long ago. We have... I don't think there was too much more. Uh, the only other one will be uh, covering, uh, again, Lost Caverns of Sojanth, as that adventure is now available for free for anybody on D&D Beyond. So we'll cover that, go ahead and dive into it a little bit again. When that video comes out, potential spoilers, I'll warn you now, but I'll let you know again in the next video. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time.